All right, so we were talking before about what happens here. What happens here is a, a, the sodium has this one electron way the heck out there, and it's flying around, and whenever it runs into something, bam, that electron gets snapped off of there. And it's actually such a loss of energy that it causes things to explode. See previous video. Let's talk about fluorine. Fluorine's a little trickier to understand, but let's talk about fluorine for a moment. Fluorine right here has the hole. It's got seven in its outermost shell, and it can take eight, which means it's got a spot where there's nothing there, okay? And it's just spinning in space, spinning in space, and the hole stays like that. Now, most of the time when something runs into it, it runs into this outer shell here, nothing happens, right? There's no place to put an ele uh, electron out here, is there? So nothing happens. Well, what happens if an electron runs into this, whoops, an electron runs into this spot right here? Well, this is a spinning set of electrons with a hole in it. What happens when you stick your hand into something that's missing a tooth? It's going to take it off. So in this case, the electrons, this thing's spinning around, the electron, which is minding its own business, probably attached to another atom, gets snapped off. And that snapping off effect becomes crates. The fluorine now has a full shell. It's now boring. It's now a noble gas. It's done what it wants to do, essentially, which is take that electron, fill up its outermost shell, boom. It can't react with any, anything anymore. You might know, think, well, it's not fair. It's got an extra electron. Yeah, but it doesn't know which one's extra, so it's not going to toss away any of those. So in essence, that fluorine becomes inert. Boring. Not going to bother you. Okay? So fluorine fluorine does this it takes away an electron and when it takes an electron it's taking an additional negative when it takes an additional negative we would therefore say it's charged and it has to be minus one all right so quick recap neon far right hand side of the table he, uh, helium, neon, argon. You should get your periodic table ready here. All of those gases do nothing. Why? Because they have a full outer shell. There's nothing to do. When they run into you, there's no holes. There's nothing sticking out funny. You can't take an electron from them. You can't put one in. It's happy, stable. But sodium over here has one extra one. Sodium over here has one extra electron on this outermost shell. It's not stable because that one thing is like, again, a kid with a big old long stick with a rock on the end of it. He's spinning around in circles. Eventually that rock's going to hit something. It's going to snap the pole. That's what happens. And so it loses its electron. Fluorine, chlorine, they're short one, right? If they're short one, they're spinning along with a place where an electron can get it stuck in there. If it runs into a, if that electron ever steps close enough, actually bumps into that spot first, it's going to get snapped off. And so when that happens, it's going to take the electron. It fills up the shell. Now it's got no place for anything to get in. It's now going to do nothing for the rest of eternity. It's bored. Okay. Um, you might not know this, but one of the things that you eat, well, actually, let's, let's do something else before I, I say this. Okay. So now that we know what fluorine does. Fluorine grabs an electron. Sodium wants to get rid of one. What happens if we put sodium and fluoride together? Well, looky here. What is going to happen? This one electron that's here runs into that one tooth that's right here, snaps off, and both of them are happy. And that is sodium fluoride. Not only that, but when they're done, this is a plus one charge. It's a minus one charge. They're attracted to each other, so they want to stick together. And so they stay stuck together and become a salt. So it's very much like sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Let's talk about sodium chloride. If you remember sodium, sodium we got over here, right? So chloride would have two in its first shell, eight in its second, and seven in its third shell. Look, it's missing one as well. That's chlorine, right? That seven means it's got a tooth missing, right? It's missing an electron. So what happens when sodium gets with chloride? You get sodium chloride. This is table salt. Sodium by itself is an exploding metal. 
chlorine is what we put in pools, not because we want them to be pretty, but because it kills things. When you put pure chlorine into something, it kills things. Okay? Anytime, and I've heard this from time to time, people said, hey, bleach will save you from a drug test. Just drink a bunch of bleach. Or you hear something stupid like, hey, this, by the way, just recently happened in Iran. They told a bunch of people, if you drink enough bleach, you can't get coronavirus. Turns out, turns out what chlorine does, is it kills the inside of your stomach and you die. Okay? Why? Because that's what chlorine does. So you think, wait a second. Mr. Resney, I've been eating salt my whole entire life. I've been eating exploding salt. But remember, once the sodium gets with the chlorine, both of them can't do anything anymore because the sodium has given up its one, the one that's whizzing on the outside, and the chlorine no longer has a hole in the outside, so neither one of them can react with anything. So they basically sit there and do nothing, and then you can eat it with, with no risk at all to you. In fact, if you don't eat salt, you'll die. So it turns out sodium by itself is bad for you, chlorine by itself is bad for you, but because the sodium's already given up its one electron and the chlorine's already taken the one electron, now you can eat it and do need to eat it, otherwise you'll die. Right? No salt, you're definitely going to die. Okay, so one last tour through the crazy. Sodium had one in the its outer shell, right? So we would say it wants to donate one. If it donates one, it gets a plus one charge. Chlorine had a hole in its outer shell. Therefore, it needs to get one. If it gets a negative charge, we say it has minus one charge. When the two get together, the sodium and chlorine will invariably snap each other off, and they'll eventually end up happy together. I'll give you another case in point. Let's try hydrogen. Hydrogen's interesting. Let's do hydrogen. Let me go ahead and clear my space. Give myself a little space to write here. Oh, file new, new, new. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. So hydrogen is fascinating because hydrogen, if you look on the chart, has only one proton, which means it only has one electron. Yay, one electron wizard around the outside. And uh, and there's this nucleus, and then. If I put another hydrogen in there, an electron out here, and one proton in the middle, and now I have oxygen sitting here. Oxygen has eight protons and eight neutrons. Its first shell has two electrons. Boom, one, two. Its next shell has one. By the way, you're like, where is this on the on the worksheet? It's not. We we got done with the worksheet a while ago. We're just gonna try. We're trying to clean up this idea so you understand the best we can. Now here's the part that's interesting. How many holes does oxygen have? Well, it put two in the first shell and six in the second, so it's actually missing two spaces. Well, look what happens. Let's say one space is here, one space is here. This one goes bumps into here and gets stuck. This one gets bumped here and stuck. Remember, this is a hydrogen, this is a hydrogen, this is an oxygen. So what's the formula for water? Two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Why? Because hydrogens have one electron in its outer shell. Oxygen needs two. It's got two holes. Plug that in, you end up with water. Water is perfectly safe. You think, well, okay, Mr. Eddie, what about the sodium chloride? Look, H and O, right? You're thinking that H and O, not a big deal? Hydrogen, oxygen, how bad can it be? By themselves, I'll show you. All right, this is a space shuttle. The space shuttle has two kinds of fuel in its main engine. It has hydrogen, plain old hydrogen, plain old oxygen. These things are little sparkers. They're actually almost exactly the same thing that we used in class to get our methane sort of thing. It's a spinning set of, uh, of, uh, of uh, obsidian against the uh, flint, sorry, flint against the steel rasps, and it shoots a bunch of sparks across there. So all that's going to come out of the bottom of this is hydrogen and oxygen two sets of two sets of gases they're actually liquid so they're going to squirt out as liquids out the bottom so this is the space shuttle making water hydrogen one electron gets snapped off runs into the oxygen bam the oxygen takes the two in there they're both stable this down here is all water whoops i should go back a little bit this down here is all water that's steam and what is this? 
This is how much energy happens when you snap hydrogen off of perfectly good oxygen. Environmentally friendly, that's just water. That water that fell off the back? That's just normal water. Inert, harmless, not a chemical at all. So rocket fuel, when it gets done, not all rocket fuel, but the rocket fuel that Space Shuttle uses is just water when it's done. That's it. And back to the greatest cheat sheet of all times. You want a list of rocket fuel, I'll give it to you. You want to know chemistry in about two seconds flat? Here it is. Here's hydrogen right here, right? It wants to donate one. Fluorine wants to get one. Sodium wants to donate one. Chlorine wants to get one. How do I know that? Reminder, these are a list of the noble gases. They're perfectly stable. That means they got a full shell. That's what it secretly meant all along, which means Fluorine, which is in the row right next to it, fluorine, which is in the row right next to it, has nine. It needs ten to be stable. How many? What does it want to do? It wants to gain one. Sodium, which is way over here on the other side of the table, it has eleven. How does it get to eighteen? It has to gain seven. That's ridiculous. Or it could lose one to get to ten. So it turns out this whole column acts the same because they all want to gain at one electron. This whole column over here acts the same because it wants to lose one electron. This row right here, it's now, oh, let me see my pen, here's my pen. Okay, let me get a blue, let's go blue here, blue. Okay, so this row right here, see them? This thing needs to lose two to get down to helium. So this is, my, 12 needs to lose two to get to 10, right? So this is my lose two row. This row right over here, this red row right here, oxygen has eight. It wants to get to 10. How does oxygen get to 10? It has to gain two electrons. So the right-hand side of the chart are the gain electrons. And you'll have to count how many far, far away from noble gases you're done, right? Nitrogen, one, two, three. It needs three electrons for nitrogen to be happy. Done. You want to see something weird? Never mind. That's good enough. Boron, what does it have to do? Well, it could gain one, two, three, four, five, or it could lose one, two, three. What's it do? It wants to lose three, so we're gonna put lose three right next to its name. So this is my lose three row. So, end of story, okay, for listing, okay? All of chemistry, or at least most of chemistry boils down to some simple ideas. The simple idea is this. The amount of electrons you have in the outermost shell determines what you do, whether you gain or lose electrons. Whether you gain or lose electrons determines which types of chemicals you like to hang out with. Sodium likes fluoride. Sodium likes chloride. Sodium likes bromide. Sodium likes iodide. Sodium doesn't want anything to do with potassium. Here's potassium right next to it. They both want to lose one. They have nothing to do with each other. You could not get them to hang out with each other. Okay? All right. Now, this is an overview. We're going to get specific as time goes forward. But this is the big picture idea, okay? So I want you to soak this up. I want you to have two pages worth of notes. And then we're going to narrow it down and make it much easier. And we'll do it in little chunks from here. But I want you to get what we're doing, okay? Um, and by the way, if you understand this idea, you're, you're a long way to understanding most of chemistry, which is kind of fun. All right. Talk to you on the other side of break. Please have a nice, safe break. Keep six feet away from other people. If you got a boyfriend or girlfriend, sorry. Stay away from other people. Okay? Just give yourself six feet. Hang out with your family. Take care of those people you need to be taken care of. Um, eat well. Sleep well. Have a nice break. And you always wanted to watch a bunch of TV shows? Watch TV shows. You want to play video games? Now's the time to do it. You got a whole week off. Enjoy it.